Hey friends, it's your boy Matt Donald here to let you know once again that I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash Matthew Donald. There you'll find bonus content for the Ritwit and Paleobites, my two podcasts, my two little podcasts that could. For the bonus Paleobites content, we're discussing pop culture featuring prehistoric animals. And this month we're talking about Dinosaur King, a video game turned anime, turned card game. It's basically Pokemon, but with dinosaurs. It's great stuff. Link is in the description for where you can sign up to the Patreon. Thank you for your support, and have a wonderful day! Roar! Growl! Snarl! Bellow! Roar! Welcome to Paleobites, the podcast that creationists say is meant to test people's faith. Oof. <laughs> My name is Matthew Dahl, and each week I and a rotating series of guest co-hosts talk about and rate a genus of prehistoric animal, be it dinosaur, mammal, arthropod, and so on. This week I'm joined by uh, the most famous dog sitter in all of Colorado, yes. uh, Laura Owsley. How are oh, you? Oh, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. We're in this fancy studio. I know. Isn't it great? <laughs> wow. I know. This is incredible. I'm, it's a hard, though, because... We're in the age of 2020, and all I want to do is touch things. I know. You just, you just want to touch it. You kind of want to lick it, you know, and just like right, right, right. put your body against it, right? Right. As I familiarize myself with most environments pre-2020, I walk in the door, I lick something, I rub my body against it. Oh, okay. Yeah. No wonder. No. Yeah. That's. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to come up with a joke. Matt was it. like, oh, she doesn't have friends. <laughs> or the ones you do have are very close to you, though. <laughs> but... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just gotta get prepared for a lot of weird stuff really early <laughs> <laughs> okay okay how about this if you were to be friends <laughs> speaking of which if you were to be friends with a prehistoric creature mm. and they were friends with you too so it wasn't just a one-sided relationship uh, yes. which one? Oh, there's <laughs> so many I want to be friends with so I give tours of Denver and mm-hmm. I don't necessarily want to be friends with triceratops as a whole right but just the but, one but that... just the one underneath coors field yeah that'd be cool right like they gotta love baseball <laughs> they gotta appreciate a good beer yeah like good good oh, good hot dog or like a, a good hot dog yeah the peanuts and cracker jacks <laughs> right right <laughs> have to love fireworks Yes. Love fireworks. Very patriotic. Sings the national anthem. Right, right. <laughs> and you know, that's the kind of dinosaur I want to be friends with. Right, yeah. I, I get that. The Coors Field Triceratops. That's good, yeah. Yeah. Plus, you could ride him. Like, he's big enough you could ride You're him. You're right. I could ride him into battle. Ride him into battle or just, you know, as a publicity stunt during the game, just ride him from home to home plate to home plate, you know, as he goes across the... Ooh, and just true, gallops. true. Or into battles cooler, honestly. <laughs> I mean, I could have both. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm here for this. This started as a joke, but now I'm gonna resurrect a dinosaur underneath Coors Field. Yes, yeah, so you're gonna get that skull, you know, get some high tech syringe and then just poke it. <laughs> yeah. Get the DNA out of the skull because that's how it works. Right. Then go to a lab and just press Control V, and then boom, there's a. <laughs> I believe it's Control D for dinosaur. Ah, oh, I guess that's true. My apologies. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So today we are talking about um, an interesting creature, mainly for the name. Most people have not heard of this one. I didn't hear about this one until I was Googling uh, dinos- funny dinosaur names, and this one came up, and I'm like, what is it? It's called to know. Zibby. Zibby. Z-B-Y. Z-B-Y. So not even, there's no vowels in there. Nope. It, I don't even know if it's pronounced Zibby. It could be just a, 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 I don't, it's, it's named after Georges Zibizuski is actually Ooh. where it comes from. Which, well, I don't know why they didn't just call it Georgiosaurus. <laughs> I don't know why they just didn't call it Zib- Zibizuski. Here, here. Zibizuski. Here, I know you can't read, but here. Right, right. We've established already that I never learned how to read. Oh, that does not look like a real last name. <laughs> Looks I Eastern mean, European. <laughs> oof. I mean, definitely, definitely. Uh, uh, that was more consonants than I think I've seen. And there was like six Z's in there and a T and yeah, a I W. Think, uh, there's two, I'm looking at There's two vowels in that whole word. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven consonants. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> the first five letters are consonants. You know, if you've got a three to one ratio of consonants to vowels, <laughs> I'm not 100% sure I'm going to get your last name right on the first go, and right. I apologize. <laughs> Well, if it, if especially if it's that long, like my name's Matt, but it's a lot mm. smaller, so I can't get your name right either. So Mahut, Mates. Anyways, uh, so Zibby is named after Georgia Zibazuski. Uh, uh, this came to me right there. Maybe that's how you pronounce it, Zibazuski. Oh. <laughs> uh, it is a uh, sauropod, which is the long, technical term for the long necks. Oh, cool. Yes, uh, it's, specifically, it's a Turus, Turiosaurian sauropod, whatever that means. <laughs> it's not a very famous group of uh, long-necked dinosaurs. Hey. It's pretty big, though. I mean, not huge, huge, but it's still pretty big. It's 52 to 59 feet, so that's 16 to 18 meters long. No, that's not big at all. Yeah, no, no. that's fine. Yeah, I mean, I compared to some other ones. Uh, have you heard of Amphicelius? You pro- what am I asking? Of course you haven't. <laughs> of course I I Googled this before I came here. All right. Well, we don't think it was that big anymore, but when it was first, when they first thought saw it, they just found a vertebra that was nine feet tall. Just no. a vertebra. No, I'm, I'm a pass on that one. <laughs> and uh. they thought that the upper estimate for that back then, I mean, we now think it was a lot smaller than it actually just had a really tall back, but wasn't. But back back then, they thought it was about 200 feet long. <laughs> No, oh, no, so, no, that's a that's a hard pass. Well, uh, uh, nature agreed because, uh, like I said, it wasn't actually that long. <laughs> but, oh, fair, fair. But, <laughs> nature too was like ah, uh, too uh, far, too far. I don't want to be Icarus here, you know. I don't want to burn my <laughs> wings going too far. <laughs> You know, as much as we would love to create a 200-foot dinosaur, really, that's just asking for trouble. <laughs> right. All right, so uh, 12 to 20 tons, too, by the way, so about twice to three times the weight of an elephant. Um, wow. Uh, diet herbivore. Uh, time. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm more cool with this creature now that I know they're a vegetarian. Yes, yes, indeed. Okay. <laughs> time, late Jurassic, 154 to 152 million years ago. Mm. Uh, location, Portugal, actually. Portugal. Hmm. I mean, I'm trying to. I, what do I know of that from Portuguese culture? They have a thing called an organ gun. That's pretty cool. What? <laughs> it's like a. Uh, it's like a cannon that has like has all these different pipes, kind of like an organ, and you just light the fuse and it goes. <laughs> it's like a machine gun cannon. <laughs> I mean, that's incredible. That sounds like some Looney Tunes. Sh- and <laughs> I'm going to need Bugs Bunny wielding that immediately. <laughs> Animators, people who can do things. Well, especially uh, if it was, as long as it's not uh, Yosemite Sand wielding, because if he does, it'll end up firing back at him, right? Oh, true. <laughs> they all covered in soot and then yeah. scowling. And then he's fine the next scene, as, of as, as you are, yeah. As you are. Uh, described in 2014, so kind of recent. Hey. Yeah. Uh, pop culture parents says, I'd be shocked if there were any. <laughs> I mean, from the sounds of it, I think it's only a matter of time before it's in the mobile game. <laughs> the Jurassic World, the game, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, one of these days. Uh, there's some creatures that, just based on the name alone, should be way more famous than they actually are. There's one creature I did in the show called Ninja Delphus, which means Ninja Dolphin. <laughs> Why is that not more well known? I mean, that's incredible. Yeah, there's a river dolphin from Japan. So, I love it. <laughs> also, dolphins are just terrifying on their own. That's true. Everyone thinks, oh, they're so cute. No, they're mean. They're vicious. They're mean. They rape each other. <laughs> yeah, and people. <laughs> that's true. They do it to people, too. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, if you were a dolphin kid... <laughs> Sorry, but they're crap. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm here to start fights on your podcast. I was, I was gonna say, no, it's. Fine. <laughs> I'm trying to think what's a nice sea creature. Uh, manatees. Manatees are manatees. good. Manatees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want a nice, a uh, huggable sea creature, go to a manatee. Uh, all right. So to be honest, I, j- I just chose Zibby here because of the name. I mean, what is this name? I love this name. Zibby. Zibby. I think it's like the perfect name. It sounds very Land Before Time to me. Right. No, it's true. But it's just, it, you'd think for an animal called Zibby, you'd expect something small, right? like, a, like a cute little creature. Mm. No, not a 60-foot long neck. I mean, it sounds to me like, so there's uh, some research to believe, and take what I say with a grain of salt, because I got this from Tumblr. Oh, yes. Uh, 
But there's some research to believe that Hades' dog, Severus, they think that he might have named his dog Spot. Oh, I think I've heard this. Is it just all three heads are Spot or just one of them? I think as a collective, they're named Spot. So Spot 1, Spot 2, and Spot 3. <laughs> oh, God, I just had theater flashbacks. Spot 1, go. Oh, I get it. Okay. <laughs> I like to think that in terms in terms of Cerberus, uh, the dynamic of them is like uh, the the three hyenas from Lion King, and that two mm. of them two of the heads are very very mean and vicious. Right, the other one's just like. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of podcasts, have you ever listened to Welcome to Night Vale? No, but I'm going to if it's anything like what I just said. <laughs> <laughs> There's a character called Hi- Heart. Wow. Hiram McDan... Ooh. Hiram... There's Hiram McDan... Wow, I can't do this today. Rule of thumb for creating <laughs> characters. Make sure people can say their names. It is not even a hard name. I just can't <laughs> get it out today. There's a five-headed dragon. Oh. And they are designated by the colors of each head. Ooh. And there's one point... Mild spoilers. I think this yes. is like season two or season three. Okay. Uh, Basically... Four of the heads are in jail, but the fifth head is pro is uh going to go on trial against the other four heads. Wait, are these heads still all connected? Yep. How's that work? If four of them are so, the heads are just sticking into a sail saw, well, the fifth head can't really go too far because the body is connected has to be close to this jail. So like the fifth head gets to like stick his neck out. Okay. Of the cell, they have like like a little hole just for Violet. Ah, okay. Uh, I guess if it's if you're going to court, I guess the courthouse might be in the same room as the jail, the same building as the jail. So right, yeah. You so know, the it... four of the heads are stuck in their cells while the fifth head's kind of like it's just testifying, yeah. right? Yeah. So okay, I could see that. <laughs> hey, it was Zibby. <laughs> Zibby, <laughs> how did we get here? <laughs> yeah, uh, but so Zibby, like I just like just the fact that it's this giant log neck and it's called Zibby. It's like imagine like a documentary, like Walking with mm-hmm. Dinosaurs, narrated by Kenneth Branagh or Richard Attenborough. It's like over here we have a, gri- a herd of the giant dinosaur known as Zibby. <laughs> <laughs> Millions of years ago, you will see these creatures very majestic. Strong across the common area over here if you look you'll see a very long long neck this car- creature's name is zibby <laughs> that's not a typo a her- right a herd of zibby walking across the wetlands oh no look out it's zibby <laughs> it's a whole crowd of zibby Please. it's a whole stampede of zibby the stampede of zibby <laughs> somebody save mufasa <laughs> I love the Lion King references. God. <laughs> I'm just going with whatever reference I got today. Right. Uh, okay, so so you might wonder, who names this thing Zibby? Who does that? Well, apparently, uh, these three paleontologists, Octavio Madius, uh, Philip D. Mannion, and Ooh. Paul Upchurch, who described and named it in 2014 after discovering its bones in Portugal. They named it after George Zibizuski, a right. guy known for studying the geology and paleontology of Portugal. Oh. But like I said, if, if you, I mean, I like the name Zibby. It's kind of fun. But uh, just for convenience sake, just name it Georgiosaurus. You know, but like, then he could be named after any George. Yeah, I guess there's only one Zibby. Exactly. <laughs> like, this does not sound like he's the John Smith of Portugal. Like, it sounds like a pretty original name. Yeah. I'm just imagining, like, there's only one Zibby. So, I'm at, like, you know, they think these long necks, they had tails that were kind of whip-like, so they could kind of go... Because mm, right. they, they ended kind of short. I don't know if this one did. That's not the right family. But let's say if it did, and it could, whenever it went somewhere, it could go to a tree and then whip a tail, kind of like to make the Z on the trunk, like in Oh, like Zorro. in Zorro. Yeah, just Zibby. <laughs> Zibby. <laughs> the tail of Zibby. <laughs> uh, Zibby was here and liberated the people. <laughs> I'm going to need... Pictures of Zibby in a pirate costume on a ship with a sword. <laughs> Zibby be tempers. <laughs> <laughs> that was so bad. I know, I'm so bad. I apologize. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> Uh, this is fine. I can laugh and wear a mask at the same time. I won't suffocate. Yeah, exactly. Oh, and you won't feel the spit like just on the other side of the mask. From... Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but so, uh, 
not much is known about Zippy other than its mm. odd name mm. uh, and location. But all the artwork I can find of it, like all the paleo art I found of it, seems to have it on a beach all the time. Like, why is mm. that? You know, some people are just beach bums, right? Well, just, I guess a Zippy enjoys a good romantic walk on the coastal sands, but where's the mm. fossil evidence for that? Mm. <laughs> you know, sometimes you just... I know a lot of people who live in Colorado who will take any opportunity to, like, go to Florida or California. Yeah, I was going to say, go to the beaches of Colorado, right. Right, right. <laughs> just stroll along our lovely white sand beaches here in mm-hmm. landlocked mountain country. <laughs> uh, but anyways, the, the subsection of sauropod long-necked dinosaurs that Zibi is from, the Turosaurians, is a more basal group of sauropods, which means kind of like like ancestry ancestor sort of thing like kind of more primitive hmm. um uh for the middle jurassic to the early cretaceous that was predominantly in europe north america and africa which shows just how close those three continents were back in the day wow so that's that's the fun fact about zibby wow it all comes back to pangea <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is a little bit after pangea but they're still close yeah. enough at the time but yeah okay yeah. that's insane so are, are you telling me because now I'm convinced that Zibby could sail boats. <laughs> Maybe. So you're telling me that they just like walked between these continents or just like hung out in these different places? They didn't have like a cruise ship line? Well, you said that Zibby was on a pirate. You went on a pirate ship. Maybe it was actually on a pirate ship. A. Hey. Oh, Zibby be timbers. <laughs> it's worse the second time. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> All right. Well, we're now at everyone's favorite part of the show, maybe. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Where we rate the animal one out of 65 million for whatever Oof. reason we want. Now, how are you going to rate it on your uh, unique scale? <laughs> oh, I am going to rate it seven Captain Hooks. Oh, seven Captain Hooks out of what? Or, out just, of... or just seven Captain Hooks. Just seven Captain Hooks. <laughs> it's up to me to decide right, right, right. what that means. Okay. It's up Very to good. interpretation. Good score. Uh, I'm going to rate it, uh, you know, just for its odd name. Yeah, there's not a whole lot about it, but, you know, I love its odd name and so much that it trumps all the other things mm-hmm. I could have against it. So 65 million, I'm saying. Yes! <laughs> Zippy. Is this the first 65 million dinosaur you've rated? Uh, not di- maybe, maybe dinosaur, not creature overall. Actually, no, it's mm. not because I've, we've done my favorite dinosaur on the show, Sign Raptor, which is... Uh, it's called, um, it's called, it means Chinese thief. It's spelled oh. Sin Raptor, but the main character of my books, Megazoic, is a Sign Raptor, so I, I love it that much. So, All right. So I rate it 65 million, or I might have rated it like 65 billion or something stupid. <laughs> so your next series of books will all be about Zibby on a pirate ship. Yeah, yeah, now that I think about it, yeah. I mean, I, I would, I would like to say that I'm going to move on from dinosaur-related fiction, but maybe not. Not if there's a chance to have a Zibby on a pirate ship. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. Uh, Could be a novella. <laughs> I'm a Zibby on a pirate ship, and oh, I'm a Zibby oh, on a pirate oh, ship. It's a Zibby and... life for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Zibby on a pirate ship, and my name is Zibby. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming soon to a theater near you. Uh, it's going to be break all the box office records. Absolutely. All right. Well, that's it for this week. If you want to contact the show, uh, uh, you can contact me at Matt D at MatthewDonCreator.com. You can follow me on social media at MatthewDonCreator on Facebook, MatthewDon64 on Twitter, and MatthewDon64 on Instagram. Uh, you can contact me. Like, through that, I can relay messages. So if you have uh, your Zibby on a pirate ship image that you photoshopped, I can yeah. relay it to Laura here. Yes, please do. <laughs> I will I will love you forever. I was trying to think of some form of payment that's not money that I could do. I will pet uh, I will pet uh, your dog. Uh, uh don't do the lick thing that you're doing. Oh, <laughs> well there's I'm gonna put my foot down with that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine this time. All right, yeah, yeah I guess. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, if you're interested in writing, I have a book. Uh, 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 wait, not books. I went ahead of myself. Can we try that one again? <laughs> if you're interested in writing, I have another podcast called The Rit Wit, where two twits talk about writing, uh, who Laura has been on one episode of. Yeah. Yeah. So that's fun. She talked about theater management. And... Yes. Because when I am not talking about dinosaurs on pirate ships, I am doing theater management. I'm looking forward to your next uh, big uh, musical that you're doing, Dinosaurs on Pirate Ships. Yes. Ugh. <laughs> uh. Coming soon to a theater near you. Yeah, that should be fun. 
Uh, if you're interested in reading, I have a book series on Amazon, Megazog, available for print and Kindle. Uh, Sign Raptor, like I said, is the main character. There is no Zibby in it. I, I guess it's one of those creatures that I would have put it into the books as a background character, but I didn't think anyone would believe that it was a real one. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh. there's some creatures I refuse to use in my books because of that specifically. There's one called Panty Draco. <laughs> 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 oh god it sounds like bad harry potter fan fiction <laughs> oh god you're right <laughs> <laughs> oh draco extra bite oh, no. yeah you'll be my panty draco <laughs> <laughs> i'm so disturbed <laughs> episode of Paleo Bites. Uh, zippy, zippy. What are you doing in my drawers? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs>